past, I've made a few videos about genetic testing, most of which involve me uh, sort of defending it being open to the general public, like through companies like 23andMe, which I think are generally good in that they allow people like me to learn more about our genetic data and more about genetics in general. Uh, but we need to be really careful in a number of respects. Number one, we have to be careful about what these companies are doing with our data, uh, especially here in the United States, where we have both a truly predatory pharmaceutical industry combined with, not surprisingly, a privatized healthcare system, which, uh, in which companies are just begging for reasons to deny people coverage, like pre-existing conditions. And, you know, there's no condition more pre-existing than the one that you're born with in your genes. The other way we need to be careful is in how these companies inform people about their genetic data. Because uh, this stuff can be really confusing. Statistics can be so tricky, and it can be hard for people to understand how their genes might increase their relative and absolute risk of getting certain diseases. Like, what does it mean for you exactly if you have a gene that, say, raises your risk of contracting Alzheimer's by 50%? Obviously, that's not good, but is it something that you should lose sleep over? What are your lifestyle factors that are playing into it? What was your original baseline risk? You don't want to spring that kind of information on people without putting it into the right context, because you don't want people freaking out and doing something drastic, like, for instance, getting a double mastectomy just because they have learned that they carry the BRCA1 gene mutation that increases risk of breast cancer. Now there's new research published in Nature Human Biology that suggests there might be one other danger we should be looking out for. And this one actually has as much chance to be beneficial as to be detrimental. Uh, psychologists at Stanford University found that telling people a specific detail about their genes was enough to activate what we colloquially know as the placebo effect. Basically, genes became a self-fulfilling prophecy in these people's heads. They first had two groups of about 100 subjects each uh, run on a treadmill until they couldn't take it anymore. They then waited a week and they brought all those people back and they told one group that they possessed a gene mutation that would make it more likely for them to get winded during physical exercise uh, and that they would be more likely to overheat. They told the other group that they had the protective form of that gene and that they wouldn't get easily winded. Uh, they then had all of them run on the treadmill again. The groupings were completely random, and while this gene does exist, the people in each group didn't actually necessarily have that mutation. Uh, despite that, the group that was told that they would be more likely to be winded, they couldn't run nearly as long as the people in the other group. Just telling them that their genes uh, made them likely to get winded got them winded. They followed this up by repeating the experiment using a different gene. Uh, this one has been found to make people feel full faster, uh, protecting them against overeating and obesity. The people who were told that they had the gene mutation ate less in a meal compared to people who were told they did not have that mutation. It's a pretty impressive effect, uh, considering that it didn't even require giving anyone a sugar pill, just talking to them about their genetics. Uh, and it really underlines how important it is for genetics companies to properly frame their results if it's that easy for people to take their genetics as destiny. Just so it's clear, this isn't a finding that shows that, for instance, learning you have genes associated with cancer makes you uh, more likely to get cancer just through the placebo effect alone. But the researchers point out that if it's a gene for, say, lung cancer uh, that comes along with a reduced respiration ability, then, yeah, you might find it hard to catch your breath once you know you have it. Of course, even if it does, uh, we don't know how long that effect would last. Uh, this study for purely ethical concerns had to be very short term. The subjects thought that they had the gene for less than a day before the researchers sat them down at the end of the experiment and explained that this was all a big fat lie. Because really, you can't just send people out into the world believing that they have certain genetic risk factors that they don't actually have. 
The tricky thing with placebos is that sometimes they work even if you know they're a placebo. Uh, so there's no easy solution to this. All we can do is keep studying it and hope that companies like 23andMe take extra precautions to make sure that they're not sending people out into the world believing things that aren't true about their genetic destiny.